Right, this is the next part of the electromagnetism topic and this is um, the introduction to the generator effect, uh, sometimes known as the dynamo effect, uh, or uh, to put it more technically, electromagnetic induction. Right, so it's quite very similar to the motor effect in many respects, in the fact that it involves um, a wire, a current and a magnetic field. Now, if you remember with the motor effect, the motor effect uh, is when you have a current carrying wire, so you provide the current, you provide the magnetic field, and a force is produced on the wire. All right? Then the direction of the force, as we remember, is predicted by Fleming's left-hand rule. Right, this is the, the generator effect, or the, the dynamo effect. Like I said, very similar to the motor effect, except we provide, again, the magnetic field, but we produce, we provide, the movement we move the wire and then a current is produced by that effect all right so where we're providing the magnetic field we're providing the movement and a current is produced that's why it's called electromagnetic induction because a current is induced in the wire and I'm going to show you right same magnet we've seen before this is the horseshoe the very heavy quite a strong magnetic field between the, the north and south poles here now, I've got the same wire we, we, we've already seen, um, but instead of connecting it to a power supply, we've got it connected to a multimeter. Now, we've got the multimeter set to a very, very small current range. This is now, this is measuring up to, says up to 200 microamps. If you remember, micro is 10 to the minus six. So we're talking about really small currents to start with here. Right, now, here we go, are you ready? So I'm gonna move the current, the wire, down. And as we can see, a current is produced in the wire. So we're looking at around about two to three microamps, two times 10 to the minus six amps. If we come back, again, we get a current. All right, now you might have noticed that one was negative, one was positive. So let me just explain how we know. Right, this multimeter, we've got red and black. If it gives a positive current, here, that means conventional current is going into red. If we get a negative current here, that means conventional current is going into black. Okay, so let's see. Right, there we go. Positive, meaning there's a conventional current going in that direction in the wire. Negative, meaning there's a a, con uh, a conventional current going in that direction in the wire, okay, because it's going into black. Right, now which direction or what, what determines or what helps us predict the direction of the current? Well, it's another law, and, but this time we use our right hand. Now this is Fleming's right hand rule, but the fingers mean the same things. First finger field, so that's the direction of the magnetic field from north to south. Second finger is conventional current. And thumb, again, is thrust. Thumb is the movement on the wire, of the wire. So let's check that. Right, if we're going to move it down, we're getting a positive current, which means it's going into red. So conventional current is in that direction. So let's check that. Okay. We're moving it down. We've got a first finger field in that direction, which means the second finger is pointing in that direction. So, as predicted by Fleming's right-hand rule, we've got a conventional current going into red when we move down. Okay, what about coming back? We're getting a negative current here, means we're going into black, so the conventional current is in that direction. Okay, so that as agreed with my right hand, the conventional current is in that direction, the first finger field is in that direction, and the thumb is moving upwards. So there you go, Fleming's right hand rule. Now, we don't generate electricity. Okay, by the way, this, this, this effect, this is generator effect, this is how electricity is generated in power stations. Okay, um, but we don't use single wires. We're going to get a much bigger current when we use 
a longer wire. So if I take this, the same type of wire, but longer, and if I wrap it round my hand, we can see we're gonna have more lengths of the wire cutting through the magnetic field lines at the same time. So let's see if this gives us a bigger current. Okay. Right, you ready? So we can see we get we get we get about two before, but we're getting a noticeably bigger current there because we're having more lengths of the wire cut through the magnetic field. Okay. Now we don't normally, as well, use these types of magnets. We can show the dynamo effect with a coil like this, okay? So let's, let's have a play with this one. Now, instead of moving a wire or moving a coil through a magnetic field, we can just as well move the magnet. As long as there's relative motion, between the wire and the magnetic field, field lines will be cut. So I can show you, there's our friend the bar magnet again. Okay. So in, produces a current in one direction, out, produces a current in one direction. Okay. So again, we're not getting very big currents there, are we? Because, well, I think you'll notice that the, the magnetic field is much weak, weaker than the horseshoe magnet. But if we were to use these fellas, now these are called neodymium magnets. These are the strongest commercially available permanent magnets you can buy. Okay, and these are really strong. So these are the ones that will go flying across the desk. So as you can see, north, south. Well, if that goes in, okay, as we can see, as long as there's field lines be, are cutting a wire, a current will be produced in that wire. Okay. But we can go one better than this. We can. Okay, I've made this one here. Right. So I've got, uh, don't know how many turns that, but that, that's all the wire I could find in the house. I've attached it all together, wrapped it around a jam jar, and then that's produced. That should be quite a sizable current produced if we were to put a magnet through it. So let's see what we can get with this one. So crocodile clips. There. Right, let's, let's have a look first with the bar magnet. Okay. This one here. So what sort of current are we going to get there? So three, we can go, we'll get up to eight. Okay, so again, when we're going in with the North Pole, we're getting a positive. When we go out with the North Pole, we're getting a negative. Okay, so still not the biggest of currents. So what about if we use these? Okay. So that's more like it. Still not a very big current. So we're talking about yeah, almost 100 microamps. So still a small current. Okay. So I'm going to show you a, a proper generator. So that's me making my own coil with a wire. Okay. Now, actual generators... I like this. Now you might no, uh, notice that this is the electric motor that I showed you in a previous video. But motors and generators are basically the same, the same piece of kit. Okay. But like I showed you with the wire and the horseshoe magnets, if it just depends what you're producing. Here we're going to we're going to supply the, the 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 motion. We're going to supply the magnetic field, and a current should. Be produced okay 
Are you ready? Right, so if I spin one way, we get a negative current. If we spin the other way, we get a positive current. Okay. Now we're getting a DC current here because of the, the split ring commutator. Make sure that the current flows in one direction. Pretty good. Okay, but better still is this one. Okay. Well, it's a similar thing. We've got we've got a we've got a a coil of wire that's going to spin in this magnetic field. There's the terminals there. So let's see what sort of current we can induce now. Okay. So if I spin it. Now, what does that mean? Okay, you should notice that if it goes to one on a multimeter, it means the current you're producing is too big for the value you're trying to, it's set for on the range. So let's go up to the next one. Still, now we're into the realms of milliamps. So, still. Right, we're now into amps on the, on the multimeter, so. I need to go up to that one, don't I? So let's see what sort of current. So almost two amps there. I'm producing two amps of current in, in, the, in, in, the, in the circuit, which is quite a sizable amount. Now, if we were to not measure current, but measure the voltage, that is being produced now by right, 20 volts. So, there you go, almost three volts produced, which is pretty good. That's three volts is the, the voltage of two batteries. Yeah, of your, your regular AA, AAA batteries, which you use it in everyday devices. You need two of those produce the same voltage. So there you have it, okay? There's the best thing I've shown you today for producing. And it's all down to this coil of wire, which has many, many, many turns on it, spinning in the magnetic field. Right, there you go. There's the little introduction to the dynamo effect or the generator effect. Thank you.